Am I live? I think I am. I think I am. Oh, yes, indeed. I am live. You get the second. Give me uno second. What's up, everybody? What is going on? California dreaming. Now, what is going on here? Thank you. 
wanted to give a little bit of time right there, but uh, excited to be here. Excited to have my solo episode, my first ever solo episode. Um, you know, RJ, uh, you know, asked me actually, actually, before we get into that, all that stuff, right, 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 guys, welcome, welcome to episode 110 Monte Ball solo episode on Untapped Keg podcast about where we share stories about folks who are in recovery, share um, certain recovery journeys, right? Million ways up the hill. Talk about successes. Also talk about some serious stuff, right? Where, where, where this journey is is not perfect. It's not a, you know, one step in front of the other. That's that's typically not how it is. Um, but we most definitely make sure to highlight that as well. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate you guys listening. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just get into it. I remember RJ asked me to do this. And um of course, I said absolutely right. Of course, um, an episode by myself, an episode where I just share my truths and talk. Uh, something that I most most definitely wanted to do. Um, and so I really just want to kind of just go ahead and get into it. I mean, um, one thing for me that I, I I like to do is just kind of revisit, you know, how all this all came about. Um, and it's been it's been two years already. Two years since the start of Untapped Keg. Two years since you know, really, RJ had the idea of, of having this podcast. Also, excuse the uh, the Xbox wires back there. I'm doing doing some doing some moving, doing some moving around, and as you can see, I got those wires back there looking a little tacky. But but two years, two years ago, RJ came to me and asked. Um, you know, what are my thoughts, uh, my thoughts about starting a podcast? What are my thoughts? And I remember, I, mean, I was a little nervous, a little anxious at first, uh, the thought of it. I remember I had a podcast prior to this one. It was not a success, not a success at all. I was didn't really know as much uh, as I do now, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and that one kind of centered around football as well, uh, football and, and other sports. And and as much as I love football, as much as I love speaking about sports, um, it just didn't go the way that I planned. And so fast forward to this one, when he asked me, I was like, absolutely. Let's go ahead and get into it. Of course, because we're going to be talking about more important things, talking about our mental health, talking about our relationships, right? Our relationships with, uh, you know, family, um, significant others, obviously our relationships with our, with our children and, uh, and bringing folks on. Um, who wanted to share similar stuff. So I, I, I said, absolutely. Absolutely is something that I wanted to do. And I got to give him credit for it. Um, because I think without his initial push for this, um, you know, I may not, you know, be here speaking right now on this episode. Uh, you know, I think I'll be doing fine, but I would not be here speaking in front of the camera on episode 110. Um, so it's been, it's been quite, uh, Quite interesting how it started, um, but it's so crazy. It's so crazy, you guys. How you know we thought about starting something like this, and 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 now we're here, episode one ten, two years later. Um, it takes a lot of work, a lot of work. But what I've gained, man, what I've gained from from this podcast has has been a lot, right? Um, it is such a such a therapeutic journey of each week, right? It's like going to therapy, but each week hopping on and talking about, you know, how I'm feeling, talking about where I'm at in my life, talking about important topics. Um, and at first it's it's right, it's it's challenging taking that mask off and and sharing with strangers right sharing with strangers how you are doing and as i go around you know right now you guys speak in high schools and speaking to certain groups i always start out my presentations with that question how are you doing and um, as i sit here and thinking about that i i the way that i go about asking it is i'll ask a few people how are you doing and this is something i learned from the podcast right Something I learned from all these episodes of sharing with RJ and sharing with you folks, right? Of being honest, sharing the truths, just 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 throwing it out there. And so as I start out my presentation, I ask folks, how are you doing? 
And, you know, some folks will say, good, I'm okay, I'm all right. And then I go about explaining why in a society, right, why do we go about asking folks how they are doing and people don't share their true honesties, right? You know, why is that question, how are you doing? Sort of like a hello, you know, hello, and that's it. You don't want in-depth responses or folks don't give you their in-depth responses or their true feelings about how they're doing, right? I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm excited, I'm tired. I'm tired. Um, some days I feel like I'm living in Groundhog's Day, right? Just over and over and over. Some days I'm, I'm just extremely excited, bouncing off the walls. People don't really give their true answers to that. And I think if people were capable of doing so, right? I feel that there would be more of a space, more spaces for folks to open up and chat with each other and be real with each other, have the ability to truly create that community that they need. And so you guys, today in my episode, I'm gonna talk a lot about the stigma that surrounds mental health. That stigma, right? That stigma I think is what creates that internalized shame that keeps people quiet. Because that judgment, that judgment that unfortunately, you know, follows when you do sometimes answer the question truthfully how you were doing. So what is that stigma? What is that that stigma that I that I that I just briefly mentioned? Um, and again, please bear with me this episode. I didn't write anything down. Um, I wanted to just talk from the heart. Um, and so for me, that stigma that I think about is is you know, obviously it's a judgment, but more in depth with that, it's the, you know, folks really not caring about how other people truly feel, right? That empathetic feelings, those, those spaces aren't created. Those thoughts aren't truly thought about or given to folks when they, when they say or want that time to share how they are actually doing. And I think that creates that stigma that surrounds this mental health talk, right? That, that that public stigma, that shame. And I think as we go about these episodes and go about Untapped Cake, that's what we truly have been trying to tear down. Myself, RJ, and obviously you folks here listen. I think if we if we continue to chip away at this this public stigma, chip away at this at this wall, um, I think we will We'll, we'll get to a place, right? Get to a place where folks don't have to feel like they're alone. Folks don't have to feel like they'll receive a significant amount of judgment for, for sharing how they are truly feeling. Um, it's, 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 it's odd when you think about it, right? It's, it's, it's really odd how we go about society and we, you know, how we use social media as like our highlight reel. You know, we only put up our good photos, we only put up our good pictures, we only put up our good videos. And I think that as we continuously do that, right, we, we, we that our self-identity on social media becomes our identity in real life where we feel as if we always have to be perfect. And so again, I'm just I'm just spitballing here, but there's there's a lot that goes into this stigma that I'm talking about. There's a lot that that fuels it. I should say, this public stigma surrounding mental health um, that unfortunately keeps people quiet and it makes people feel alone. So I hope that we continue to do what we're doing here on Untapped Keg. Hope that you guys continue to jump in so we can figure out ways to attack this, figure out ways to, to continuously build on this community. figure out ways to allow and help people to open up and help for pe- you know people to reach out to lean on folks and become their true selves right feel more comfortable in their skin um, yeah, obviously mental health is 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 a hot topic right now um, throughout society and the way that I think about it you know I was asked this question the other day actually uh, about three days ago I was asked um, you know, to, to write an op-ed piece regarding, you know, obviously what I do within the community here, but, but you know, my opinion 
about the country's mental health uh, and, and the stigma and the shock around it. And I immediately started typing up my response. And the first thing that I started writing, you guys, and this is truly what I believe is, to me, I'm shocked that there is shock around it, right? That people are surprised about where our country's mental health is at, where our community's mental health is at, right? It's the system that we built. We are in a degradation period where we are experiencing a faulty system. It's almost like it's if, if, if you have a wound and you don't treat it, then you shouldn't be surprised or shocked that it becomes infected if you're speeding, right? If you're going 10, 15 miles over the speed limit and you get pulled over and you get a ticket, you shouldn't be surprised or shocked that you received a speeding ticket. That's how I feel when I think about this society, this society's mental health. That's poor mental health right now. These systems that we've put in place are truly not beneficial to folks who need to reach out for help, for folks who want to reach out for help, who don't even know how to reach out for help. That obviously being our healthcare system, that obviously being certain politicians, you know, padding their own pockets as opposed to, you know, investing into our educational systems. Again, I don't want to get too political here, but I believe that is something that we all can agree on. We shouldn't be surprised. Absolutely should not be surprised. And so I believe those are certain things as well that fuel this public stigma, right? Trying not to really address the issue, sweeping it under the rug. Well, I don't think there's any more sweeping that we can do under that rug. I think it's, 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 it's that mole is most definitely a mountain right now, a mole hill, I should say. And, and, and for myself, I, I, I make sure to go about trying my hardest to tear that stigma down day after day, presentation after presentation, episode after episode. And obviously I don't want to speak for RJ because he's not here, but but same for him as well. Same for him. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It's actually unfortunate that I wanted to talk about some things here, about some folks who unfortunately have taken their life recently, um, certain badgers, uh, but but I, I I had that on my mind coming into this, but I actually don't want to bring it up um, or dive too deep into it. Um, but again, it's, the, it's that public stigma. It's that, that internalized shame. Um, and so it's, 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 uh, it's sad, you guys. It's sad. But again, again, I didn't have much to, uh, to written down right here. Um, I just wanted to kind of share. And, and I guess I'll just jump into how I'm feeling and how things have been going for me. Um, so I did take a little break. I did take a break from Untapped Keg uh, starting this year for about three months. Um, some things that I am involved in that are taking a lot of my time, that being school, of course, finishing up my degree here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison has been time consuming. Um, most definitely, uh, I know that you guys can understand that. Um, outside of that as well, it's been getting myself mentally prepared um, for this move, heading back to the Colorado area. I haven't shared that yet uh, publicly or um, obviously here on Untapped Cake, but I'll be moving back to the Colorado area um, as well, I decided to come back here to Wisconsin, knock out my degree, and then get back to to Colorado. But uh, it's been it's been it's been stressful. It has been extremely stressful. Um, just dealing with the anxiety surrounding that, um, the pressures of school, of course, and uh, and the anxiety surrounding what's to come next. Right? Um, what I've gained again from this show from Untapped Cake, from the folks who I've met throughout this journey of, of, of this podcast is, is just being honest, right? I'm nervous, nervous about, you know, if I'm taking the right steps um, that are going to get me towards my goals, right? 
still losing sleep at night, worried about, you know, my future, still dwelling on certain things that I, that have happened in the past. Um, still worried about how I'm going to be feeling the next day or 48 hours from now. Many anxieties that still eat away at me. Um, that still give me night sweats, night terrors, all of the above. Uh, but I would have to say that this this community, this show, with you know, for the last two years, has given me something that I haven't had in a long time. I'm in a very long time. You guys in a very long time, and RJ knows this for sure. And that's being that's being true, true friends, true people, true folks around me. Um, you know, my story is pretty public. Uh, my 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 story, you know, surrounds. You know, alcoholism, toxic masculinity, denial, right? Massive ego. Um, and obviously the game of football. Um, and within all that, right, is toxic friends as well, toxic environments, toxic people who I wanted to invite into my life. Um, who I've done such a great job for the last six years of, of eliminating from my life. But, but with that came feelings of loneliness as well. Um, feelings of... of or a lack of practice of, of stepping outside my comfort zone and finding other people. <laughs> it's always easy, right, to, to bond and meet new friends when, when alcohol is involved. Um, but you know, getting getting that out the picture, it's 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 a it's a new practice, it's a new skill. Um, so what I've gained from from this has been more than than you guys know. Um, it, it's. It's, it's feeling like home. It's feeling like a place where I can come to and chat. And so these past couple of months, um, you know, I'll say I've, I've been okay. I've been all right. I've, I've had better days. I've had better years. Um, things, things are actually going fine. Um, but again, there's still those anxieties and still that depression that still sneaks up on me. Um, still sneaks up on me and, and just eats away at me at times. And so I, I truly appreciate your guys' patience with me. I truly appreciate RJ's of, of giving me the space, giving me the time, right? As I talked about, I mean, you guys, this guy here has been the backbone, the spine of Untapped Keg, um, from editing videos to, to scheduling interviews, et cetera. And, you know, him giving me the time to take care of my stuff, giving me the space, right? Talked about that space earlier, him giving me that space to, to get right, you know, find my anchor again, get balanced is something that I'll never forget. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the type of love and care that we have to continuously give to folks who are who may be going through struggling times, right? I mean, he's sitting here editing videos, calling guests, making sure everything's right, and, and still on the same, in the same breath, giving me my space, giving me my time to heal, um, essentially giving himself more work, right? And uh, and I can't thank him enough for that. I really, really can't. And so RJ, if you're watching, RJ, if you see this, um, I just really appreciate it, man. I do appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all that you've done. Appreciate you being being a brother to me, man. Really, being a brother. Um, hold on a second. This bad boy needs to focus. No, it'll 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 focus. But um, but yeah, even I still struggle with it, guys. At times, right? I was a little nervous, truly, opening up to to RJ, someone who I've known since. I've known him since 2010. I've known this guy for 12 years, 12 years. Been in our family group chat for the last 12 years. So this is somebody I've talked to every single day. And I was even nervous of, of telling him, you know, how I'm feeling, telling him that, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm down, I'm down. I'm a little down right now. Um, because I was worried about the judgment that may have come, you know, for come from it, but I, knowing RJ, knowing that he wasn't going to do it, I still just had those worries, right? 
so had those worries because I just want to make sure that I'm putting on this perfect face, making sure my makeup is put on right, my smile is perfect, my plastic smile. Um, you know, but he made sure to, to give me that space and allowed for me to lean on him. And that, 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 that means the world to me, truly means the world to me. It does. So, how have I been? I've been I've been all right. I've been good. I've been good. I've been I've been tired, extremely tired, as you can see. Uh, a lot of late nights of schoolwork, a lot of late nights again of, of of anxieties. But I've been okay, and being okay is good right now. Um, and to the folks out there listening right now, watching, watching me just. My, my morning right now, just sharing my truths. You know, if you're feeling okay, if you're feeling down, um, you know, just share it. Share it, be honest with folks and just share how you're truly feeling when they ask you how you were doing. They should expect for you to take two to three minutes to answer that question. And hopefully if, if, this, if this is a friend of yours or a family member of yours, you know, hopefully they're wanting a two to three minute, four minute response from you to that question of how are you doing? And how are you feeling? And so I've made a promise to myself and I want for you guys to make a promise to yourself as well. Every single time someone asks you that question. Obviously, given the setting, right? I mean, if it's if it's if it's a, a a ten second elevator, right? I understand that, but every single time someone asks you that question, make sure you tell them truthfully, right? Be truthful about it, how you were actually feeling in that moment, and see what their response is. Watch their face, right? Because again, we don't we don't do this in society. There's a stigma. There's that that there's that judgment surrounding it. Do that next time. Tell them exactly how you're feeling. I mean, if you're feeling gassy, <laughs> tell them that, right? If you're feeling sick, or, I mean, all kinds of feelings, right? If you're if you are feeling, I don't even know, horny, anything, right? I, I, again, that's that, that, that's a true feeling. Um, just share it and, let, and, and just watch their reaction. Watch their reaction. And that, that should be able to give you, do that with five to 10 people. And that should give you an idea of where we are in, this, in society regarding being honest with folks. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. But again, I'm okay. I'm feeling fine for right now. Who knows about tomorrow, the next day, but right now I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. And I can't thank RJ, can't thank Untapped Keg, and I can't thank the family here in Untapped Keg uh, enough for, for, for being here, for being supportive. And so what's to come? What is to come? A lot, right? A lot. Outside of uh, my presentations, outside of School, untapped keg, um, my move. You know, I've been crushing it in some Call of Duty back there on that Xbox, trying to get RJ, you guys, back on Call of Duty. So make sure you, when you watch this video, make sure you tell RJ to re download Call of Duty, bring him back to the dark side, bring him back to the dark side. Um, I'm enjoying a lot of reading right now, a lot of reading right now. Um, I, I make sure to, you know, at least two books, um, at least two books a month. Uh, sometimes I'll just get one, but books, not, not really fantasy. I don't really like fantasy books, uh, although I, well, let me rephrase that. I do like the Harry Potter books, but I guess now in my adulthood, I've been more so reading life skills books, right? Books that are, that I can gain some practices from, learn about more practices regarding obviously public speaking or, or or how to go about addressing mental health or life coaching books um, just to keep myself moving forward, you know, each step, each day, each year. Something that I've been thoroughly enjoying, you know, kind of like turning off the lights and just being by myself and diving into a book that 
I know I'm going to gain something from. So each time I read these books, I have, you know, a notepad next to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually learning stuff from these. And it's been exciting. It really actually has been. And what else? Uh, working out, right? I mean, my journey of, of working out has been publicly documented. I did, I did share photos recently, uh, about actually about two months ago, of how much weight I've lost. Uh, back in November of 2021, I started November 15th. And on that day, I was weighing 283 pounds. 283. 283. Uh, your boy likes to eat. I'll say that 283 pounds. And today I weigh 227 pounds. Um, so that's what 50 something pounds, um, 60 pounds, whatever you do the math that I've lost. And I think that's very important. Um, that is important in my recovery and important in my journey and something that, um, that I, again, I, that I've gained from this untapped keg community where it's, Okay, you continuously work on your mental health, but obviously your physical health is important as well and pivotal in your mental health. So I've been going about running, eating healthier, drinking a lot of water, trying to stay away from as much sugar as possible. Um, and it has been beneficial, you guys. Uh, my sleep is better. Although, again, I'm still losing sleep. Uh, so imagine how I was prior, right, to this weight loss journey. I was I was barely getting any sleep, but my sleep has been better. Um, moving around better, right? Just just my joints are feeling feeling a lot uh, feeling a lot better, right? Motion is lotion, and so my it's just so my my bones are feeling better. I'm lighter, uh, less tired when I go up the stairs. <laughs> um, all this stuff uh, again, just. Working on myself year in and year out is, is what I've been doing for the last six years. Um, and this was, was the next step in my journey is, is getting my weight under control. Build my confidence, right? Um, look good, feel good. Um, you know, I'm biased, of course, but, uh, but I am feeling good um, about my weight journey. And um, you guys, I just don't want to keep spitballing here. Um, again, I didn't have much written down. I kind of just wanted to hop in, talk, talk about a, an important topic, that being the stigma, right? That's essentially what I've been addressing here this entire time is that stigma and how it's important for each one of us to, to make it an obligation to, to, to tear it down, to tear it down. How do you tear it down? Demand true responses from folks when you ask them how they are doing. Obviously being respectful, right? If they don't want to share, that's okay. That's appropriate. But allowing for them to have that space. Telling them there is no judgment that will come from this way. Being honest with folks, right? Days I still struggle. Making them feel as if you can be part of their community or that there is a community out there so they know that they're not alone. Addressing certain stuff that you see on social media, right? Very, very toxic place. The toxic melting pot, that being Twitter, is, is, is a place where folks lack a significant amount of empathy, right? Instagram as well. Being that voice for folks who, who share personal photos and you see comments under them that are inappropriate and you addressing those. You quieting those folks, who, those trolls. You being extremely supportive of the people who are stepping outside their comfort zone, making it again an obligation of yours to wake up and to shoot a text or to call somebody who you know may be struggling and just let them know I'm here for you. I'm here for you, man. I'm here for you. If you need me, I'm here. Call me, text me, FaceTime me, whatever. I'm here for you. And so I think that's. That's what I wanted to kind of get off my chest this morning is it's not just, it's not just this, this talking piece anymore, right? This mental health, this mental health that we got to start doing some action here. We start, we have to have a call to action. And I believe if we all, you know, look within and see what it is that we're doing and see what our circle is and see 
some of these signs where the stigma is thriving, right? I think we can kind of tear that down one step, you know, one person after the other. That's what I want you guys to do. It's really what I want for you to do. And so, your rest of your day today, your Sunday, your May 1st, right? Happy, happy May. Um, happy May. But your assignment for today is to reach out to somebody who you know may be struggling, who may be suffering in silence. Again, one in four adults are suffering from a diagnosable mental health disorder. One in four. It's about 80 million U.S. adults right now are suffering in silence. And I believe that number is only going to increase, right? Folks who went into the pandemic are going to come out of this pandemic with some ailments, with some, with some diagnosable disorders, uh, obviously, that they didn't go in with. And so one in four, a quarter of America right now of, of U.S. adults are struggling in silence. So your assignment today is to go out there, reach out to at least one, maybe two, and give them that space, right? Create that space for them via text or on the phone. That space allow for them to share and you just listen. Do that. And if you're already doing that, find somebody new. Find somebody new or not new. Find somebody who, who you haven't done that with. A friend of yours, of course, maybe, but someone you haven't done that with. And just try to do that every single day or every other day or once a week, right? Try that out. That is your assignment today. And let me know how that goes for you guys. But again, I wanted to share my truths, my honesty, how I'm doing. I wanted to thank you for your patience with me. RJ, thank you, man. I love you for giving me my space, man, to heal, grow, learn. I've learned so much about myself these past five months. And just talk to you guys about that stigma, what I am personally trying to do to tear this down, sharing my story, having these presentations where I don't sugarcoat it. I don't sugarcoat it at all. I know that I have a louder voice than most, right? Um, the stage that I have because I played the game of football and so it is an obligation to me. And as I hop on stage, as I share my story with folks, I make sure I lead with, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I think I'll be doing you a disservice if I did. This journey is rough. This journey is not linear. It's not. But it is a journey I wouldn't change or wouldn't wouldn't I wouldn't give away for anything. I really wouldn't. And because I, I believe I've learned so much about myself throughout this journey that I would not have learned if I would not have hopped on this train. And that's part of being an adult, that's part of growing, that's part of life. So Take care of your assignment and let me know how it goes. And this is my solo episode. So to those who tuned in, thank you. I truly appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. My name is Monte Ball, proud father, I'm an author, co-host of One Tat Cake, someone who still struggles to this day on certain anxieties, uh, depression, um, someone who's more honest with themselves, honest with the folks around them, and someone who's excited to continuously grow. And I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. So thank you for tuning in to episode 110, Monte Ball solo episode, Public Stigma, right? public stigma and how we can go about tearing it down. Make it an obligation, you guys, to go out there and get it. Thank you.